Hello and good evening, good day and good morning from wherever you are in the world. Um, <clears throat> this is a Saturday special creative stream and today I'm going to paint something very special and something very dear to my heart. I am, um, as you know, is a big fan of the Venture for podcast. And I took the liberty of designing some uh, miniatures for the characters. And I printed out these characters and we painted the miniatures, the 32 millimeters uh, on last stream. I have them right here. And today we are going to paint Seeker. Hello, Faye, how are you today? And uh, we have Seeker here. And we're going to paint him in a 72 millimeter miniature. So it's a bit bigger. And uh, it's the only one we're going to paint today. I have the rest of the crew. So uh, why don't we get started? Maybe I should jump into the view allowance on my Discord if anyone wants to join me. Yes, it works. There's also something new today. I got just got these uh, new brushes. This is the most expensive stuff I've ever bought uh, with uh, brushes. These are about uh, 20 to 25 dollars each. So they are pretty expensive. Um, but I'm going to use them and see how they work. I know I'm going to use this one today and this one here. I am uh, a bit tired because I've been working all day editing a new YouTube video. I think it will be up maybe later tonight or maybe uh, tomorrow. I am not quite sure yet. This is natural hair, uh, natural hair, uh, and uh, these brushes are handmade. So I am I'm looking forward to try them out, but I'm also a bit, uh, what do you call it, uh, nervous about destroying them. Start wetting it up and see how oh, it shapes perfectly. So soft. I just noticed that yesterday when I was painting that uh, KO from Valorant, I used the same brush for the whole job. That was uh, quite impressive that uh, I didn't switch. I didn't need the Psycho, and I almost didn't even need my uh, funny glasses. After the stream, I repainted his face and I think it uh, came out a bit better. Um, now I just need to sign it and uh, ship it, but that will be in the morning. Now it's time for Seeker and I will start with the dark uh, background skin color. Yeah, the brushes, they, they are so nice. And the details on these 72 millimeters and 75 millimeter miniatures are just so insane. Um, 
some of it looks a bit wrong because Hero Forge is mostly designed for the 32 miniatures, but uh, as you see here, his cape is quite thick um, and his jacket is also a bit thick, but it doesn't matter. It works well on, uh, on the small, small stuff, but when you upscale him, you can really see the details in his clothes. All these, uh, what do you call it, uh, buttons and stuff like that. This is just a base skin color. Yeah, <laughs> heavy duty clothes. Oh my God, these brushes are so good. Let's paint that cape. I will try to do the same color scheme as uh, before. One thing I found out recently, and that was after I downloaded and uh, created these characters, uh, was that Seeker is actually using two knives. I don't know why, but I never caught that uh, in, in the podcast before. So uh, he should have had two knives. Um, I'm very sorry about that. I didn't give him that because he really deserves it. I think we need some more paint because takes a lot more paint with a big miniature. And when using these speed paints, you have to be very generous with the paint so it can flow into all the recesses and create a natural look for the highlights. But I think we will do some manual highlights on this cape or cloak. Or is it a cape or is it a cloak? It must be a cloak, yeah, because it has a hood. Now I really know why people were recommending these brushes so much.
I have so much control. I think it was worth the investment. As I'm getting older, my eyes are getting more bad, but at this distance, I can actually still see what I'm doing. So should we have a vote each time uh, I'm doing a stream? Uh, who's up next? I'm hoping that I can uh, do a one more live stream uh, next weekend when I'm getting home from my business travel to Latvia. I just love this color, but I hate that pot because the risk of Flipping it over is so high, and then you have paint all over. I uh, better save this little guy so we won't spill some paint on him. Yeah, I think we should let the people uh, decide what... Oh, this is not the same... Oh, it is. Yeah, let the people decide what we're going to paint because we are going to get them all but i don't want to put anyone on on top another so uh this is not the same uh, purple as i used last time i think i used this one here the doomfire magenta but I actually love this mo color more because it's more purple. Oh, I forgot this edge. Switching colors again. Yeah, I really like this purple and uh, I'm I want to know how it looks when uh, when it dries up because they oft, quite often change the colors. But now I'm actually sure that I was using the other paint on uh, on his jacket here. But I like that one more.
it's pretty hard to get paint in here but lucky it doesn't matter because you can't see it when Oh, the color f Shh. crap. It was not supposed to go there. Oh, the sh crap. Well, we have to redo that. Uh, it's fixable. Doesn't look very good. No, now it should not flow more. Don't go there. Just have to wait on till it's totally dry, and then we can redo it. So precise. Okay, let's see if we can find a This ash gray. It's 
so this purple won't shine through on the leather. Now to the boots. And here it doesn't matter if I'm putting this on the base because it's actually going to be the same color. I decided I wanted to do some more basing stuff. So we need some kind of earth tone to the base. I gave this base the same treatment as the smaller one, just with some bigger sand and gravels. That music is a bit weird. Um, the base is uh, totally uh, smooth and flat when I just printed it. It is on these bases. Um, there is some structure on uh, the bases I used for these Valorant miniatures, like it's uh, dry earth or something. But for these models, it was totally smooth. Um, I use uh, some standard, uh, this is just some PVA glue, I put it on and uh, then I use this uh, scenery sand. It is very stupid to buy sand when you can go outside and just get it, but uh, at least they did something to clean this and uh, sort it out so uh, there won't be any impurities in it, but it is just uh, ordinary sand. And then I let it dry and uh, I paint it with uh, the same colors as uh, the base uh, and the rest of the miniature. Paint it black, give it a gray cinephile highlight and dry brush it with white. Uh, you can actually see the whole process in uh, my upcoming YouTube video, uh, the one I edited today. Uh, 
so there should be a, a chance to to see it with your own eyes I totally forgot to paint this arm. Well, well, we have to bring out the purple paint again. Let's open this again. Yeah, I even forgot some of his glove under here. Oh, I forgot 
to change my thing to art. You can't say have that it say Valorant. That's not good. I missed a spot there. I think I will paint some of this Gravelord Grey on the base, mixed with some dark wood. We need that to be very, very dry, so I can run over it with a dry brush and make something that looks a bit more green. I might as well also use some of my green washes to give it a more, a more mossy look. But for now, we have earth. I think the face is getting ready for the second color. And for that, I'm using the Dorado skin, which I always use for Caucasian skin, but I will mix it with that hardened leather to give it a 
more dark glow. Uh, and I think the color is very beautiful for that skin tone. Um, And now I actually need my funny glasses. Thank you. I wish that Rodney was here so he could tell me exactly what skin tone he liked this character to have. I think I made this bit too orange. in some this tiger skin I think uh, this purple is dry enough so we can give it some dry brush. And I'm going to use one of the big ones. Yeah, this is the good soft one.
I think we need to do let that dry more before we start <laughs> with the dry brushing. I also saw that I missed a spot. Now I think we can put some light in his eyes. Uh, dry brushing is what I actually did with uh, his cloak. Um, you use, a, yeah, as it's called, a dry brush. It, it's, uh, it has to be very dry and uh, you don't soak it in water. Uh, the other brushes here are always soak them in water before I put paint on them. But in this case, it's dry. And I you, I just wipe most of the paint off on a piece of uh, paper or a cloth. So there's very little paint in the brush. And then I can just uh, stroke it all over uh, where I want uh, to, to get some highlights. And uh, it gave me uh, this effect because I was using a bit brighter purple. And it's a very good weathering effect. Yeah, I guess in, uh, in archaeology you use dry brushing to wipe the dust of stones when you are doing layers while uh, doing a dig out. Uh, I could imagine that would be some of the same. I have a, a very big one here. This is mostly for uh, terrain use because <laughs> it wouldn't make sense to use in this guy. It was that fluorescent green for those eyes. And now I have to be very precise. So I think I'm gonna bring out the insane detail brush, my glasses. See if we can put a tiny drop of paint in those eyes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I will start over on the explanation. Um, this, this is a dry brush. And uh, it is dry because I don't soak it in water. These ordinary brushes I soak in water before I dip them in paint. But this one here, I try to has, have a little, as little of paint on it as possible. And then I just wipe it off in my underlaying paper here or in a, in a dry cloth. So there will be very little paint on the brush. And then I will just start to, uh, to wipe it off gently on, uh, on the model. So I only hit all the high points on the surface and it will give me this structure. 
And I think in archaeology, you in archaeology you will uh, use a dry brush to wipe off uh, dust. Uh, that was uh, what I was saying before. Uh, when you are layering down through all the old layers, and you have to wipe away dust for digging out something of the earth. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in that. And then I was showing off this big dry brush I use for terrain. I have not used this one yet, I just got it recently. Previously I had these, and you can see this has been used before. But it looks like it's overkill with a brush that size here on, on, a, on a miniature like this. But I, could, I, I even used this size when I was dry brushing these. Okay, let's see if those eyes will glow. I will just turn off some of the light here. Yep, it works. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's uh, it makes sense that it's uh, for artifacts that can't be wet. Yeah, I love those eyes. It's insane how much a uh, drop of fluorescent paint can do. I think I will dry brush his boots as well, just to uh, make it a pop a bit more. It brings out all the details in the, in the leather. Okay, let's see if we can uh, put a drop of gold paint. And this is my favorite gold paint from Green Stuff World. It's the best gold paint I've ever worked with because it's just like liquid gold. should put on these. As this time I'm only painting the time buttons.
buckler up here. I will also give that a go point. All this gold stuff is pretty hard to wash out of the brush. I don't think it's uh, acrylic. Maybe I should use some isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol works every single time. This is a Vallejo steel. It's a very dark metallic color and it's a uh, it's perfect for weapons because it gives this very dark metallic look. 
and then I can highlight the edges with a pure silver and it will make the knife look very sharp. Yeah, I really love it and uh, just wait until I highlight the edges uh, with the silver, it will look so awesome. And when it's dry, there's a tiny dot there, I want to give a gold touch as well. Okay, I want to put a tiny black dot into those eyes, so he actually has a pupil. Want some more green in there and then we have to put in maybe another black dot on top of that because i don't think i can avoid hitting that Then I need a long, thin for the silver. This is one of the best silvers I have from uh, Vallejo. Spanish paint. Actually, the green stuff world is made. It's okay, Green Stuff World is also a Spanish paint. The Army Painter is Danish, and then I have these awesome Reaver paints that are, yeah, it says loud and clear here, made in the USA. Uh, and what state is, oh, it's the whole country, I think. No, that must be a state. Help me out here. Is that Texas? It doesn't say much here. Oh, my geography isn't that bad. Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, that was Texas.
Now this is a silver and I will put it right here on the edge of the weapon and now you have a weapon that is totally sharp. I think most of the purple is dry, so I will find one of my tiniest dry brushes and put some of this. And I also need, where was my dark? I had a dark purple darker than this one. I misplaced it maybe? No, it's right here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just a visual trick and it's pretty simple to make something that's not sharp looks like, look sharp uh, through paint. Um, in this world of painting miniatures, uh, there's a new technique called NMM, that's non-metallic metallics. And uh, it's not allowed to use metallic colors, you will use ordinary colors to make a metallic look. And it's one of the most hard techniques, techniques to learn. It requires a ton of practice. Uh, and I haven't tried it out yet. <laughs> but uh, Mike Moans that was here, uh, he dropped in shorts for a short while uh, in uh, my chat. Uh, I think he was the one that, uh, he was in that raid. And uh, he he's very good at uh, doing non-metallic metallics. It's very time consuming. But it looks so awesome, and it looks good on uh, on photos. But you just build up different colors to to give it this metallic look. Just imagine, you're not in doubt when you see something that should look metallic when you're watching a cartoon uh, or look in a comic book. Um, and they can actually make something look metallic and sharp just with paint and there's no, no metallic paints in a cartoon. It is ordinary flat paints, but with this technique uh, you can visually do something that is metallic and it just looks awesome. I really want to learn it, but uh, it requires a lot of patience. So I just take these away and use metallics for metallics. And for my purpose, uh, it, it's okay that it's metallic paints.
think I will put some more highlights to his face. Just on his cheeks and nose. See if we can paint those eyebrows, give them a nice black color. And I'm thinking we are almost done here with this figurine. I will uh, do some more basing and uh, I will start with a green tone. No, I think I don't want to use a tone. I will just dry brush it. So uh, give me some green. Oh, this look po <laughs> this looks very, very green. Then we will go up to this jungle green. That looks even more poisonous. Hmm. 
Hmm. Just need to even stay on you. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'll use this instead. Then I have this called Battlefree, Battlefield Rocks. And this is actually just, I think it's cork that is uh, cut up in small pieces and tumbled. Or it could be some kind of bark. And uh, I think I will take a couple of these and uh, glue them onto the base. I also have some of this uh, grass. And for that we will need to put on some glue. And for that, I will use a very old and broken brush because putting glue on a brush will just destroy it. If you don't put it in water instantly after use. And it won't stay white when it's dry and it will take a couple of hours it will uh, be totally clear. This is just ordinary PVA glue. You'll probably know the thing you can get in the US. I see a lot of uh, terrain builders use it. It's called Elmer's glue, and uh, it is basically the same thing. into the water with that. I don't know if we can uh, get Elmer's glue here in Denmark. I think I saw it on Amazon, so I can probably get it from Amazon Germany. We don't have Amazon here in Denmark, so I have to import everything from Germany. rocks to the base. Maybe I should have used some super glue for that. I think I will do that instead. Then we can put a tuft. Yes, I love tufts. Here I have a bunch of tufts in different shapes and 
These are all wrong. I'll use some. Oh yeah, here's something. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's super common. Yeah, and uh, in, in, I think in Europe it's uh, pretty uncommon. We don't have much, I have never seen it. Or maybe I have, but I just never noticed it. But we have a ton of other same similar kinds of glue. stuff. So we have a couple of branches on the ground, or maybe small sticks. Yeah, I think I will drop putting on these a uh, bit, they will fall off anyway. And I don't want to overdo it. It just has to be some small details to the base. Look at these tiny leaves. I just love this stuff. If you have to do something in the fall, or make some forest-like bottoms. These are so cute. Can I grab one? Yeah. Can focus. Uh, I know a lot of people, they also use tea leaves, and I think there's a couple of tea leaves down here as well. No, it doesn't smell of anything. They removed all the smell from the tea. Well, what do you think, Faye? Shall we call it for today and say that Seeker is done? I will uh, take some... Uh, pictures of him and put it on my Instagram and I will po post a picture in the Venture Forth chat. But now you can uh, you can compare these two. And uh, one last thing before I sign off.
I will uh, take out my pen. And here in the bottom of the large miniature, I will write two. Then I hope I can ship it with the rest of the miniatures when they are done and hope it will land in the hands of Rodney. Thank you so much for watching today. Uh, it was a short stream, but it didn't took long to, to paint one of these and uh, it's easy to, to overcome a one and a half hour stream and uh, just paint one mini and have focus on that. Um, again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you stayed all my whole stream, Faye. And uh, I can see I have a couple of other silent viewers and uh, thank you for staying here as well. Um, Let's see if we can find someone to raid with our four viewers, if there's anyone out there. Um, nobody I know that is a painting is online right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, No. Let's see if we can find something in a browser. Oh, we have the mad mini mad cat. He was not on my list because he only have two viewers. The Mini Mad Cat, he does some awesome painting. He's an insanely good painter. And he knows the NM, NMM, the non-metallic metallics. Yeah, we are going to rate Mini Mad Cat. What is what? Oh, that's a sports Thank sports you so much for watching. Else, I can't think Rating in system. five seconds. Down, use that Thank you for staying here. Beginning of a trap.